want to welcome you to the Tucson blockchain channel. In this channel we talk about pretty much Bitcoin and the power it has to transform the Tucson community. So uh, I haven't made a video in a while and I think right now is a really, really important time to talk about how Bitcoin is a uh, peaceful protest against what is happening. So uh wow things are pretty chaotic right now a lot of people are protesting i think right now is probably one of the most important times not to turn against each other and it's been pretty chaotic on twitter as people are lashing out against each other uh but there's a lot of good conversation going around in our communities as far as how do we make a more fair society for everyone uh that being said i feel like Talking about money and the way that it works is one of the most important conversations to have right now. So I'm going to go over this website called WTF Happened in 1971. So to give a little bit of a uh, background, this isn't a deep dive. I'd highly encourage you to go and do your own research after this. Um, but essentially what happened in 1971 is the Vietnam War was going on and Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard, which essentially was uh, the U.S. dollar was tied to uh, a certain amount of gold and you could trade a certain amount of dollars for a certain amount of gold and so essentially what that did was it tied the dollar to a scarce asset giving it relative stability and one of the reasons why they suspended the gold standard was because the Vietnam War was really expensive especially when the dollar was tied to a scarce asset and ever since then we have remained off the gold standard which has allowed for the government to print as much money as they have wa wanted to and that's been real apparent recently as we've been printing insane amounts of money and I'm going to talk a little bit of looking at these charts as to why that is harmful so right here is just a basic chart talking about how productivity has gone up 246 percent and compensation has been about half that uh, since 1971 and you can see there's a very very uh, obvious split there economic policy institute i'll have this website linked in the description for you to check out uh, real GDP, wages, and trade policies in the U.S. So here's the real medium weekly earnings of full-time workers. Uh, you know, average real wage. You know, the, you see the GDP go up and wages are not following, and that's pretty obvious if you're a normal person uh, who is working you know that your money is not following inflation. And it happens pretty quickly. You know, we're seeing things like the minimum wage being raised, raised, raised everywhere and you're not getting raises to compete with that. And pretty soon a lot of workers that were making okay money are gonna be at minimum wage and they're just gonna be at a loss of jobs. You, what's cheaper to run a computer to take orders at mcdonald's or to employ people you know at the end of the day the people that it hurts are the people on the bottom but it's just an obvious thing inflation is bad um you know they try and combat it with minimum wage which just creates less jobs so uh, there, there's some important ones so wages for men versus gdp have gone down a lot for women it's been better Believe it or not, uh, consumer price index, you know, this one's pretty obvious. There was some inflation after World War II, and then 1971, when they took us off the gold standard, it's almost straight up. Uh, that means stuff like food, uh, stuff that you're buying is growing more expensive, uh, except for maybe technology. Technology is pretty deflationary. As computers get more powerful, they're less expensive. It's pretty interesting. Um, this one's really interesting. I think we can all testify to this. Everybody's experienced this. Rent goes up, uh, more you know, houses go up in value, 
uh, and yet wages don't follow that. You know, so what we're having to do is, you know, you see the manifestation of this in less and less young people buying homes. They're getting out of school with massive student debt, and the last thing that makes sense is mortgaging a home, you know, and only adding to their already immense amounts of debt. Uh, so there's that, and that's, this is just representing uh, Boston and New York. A lot of different places are going through uh, massive increases in home values. Tucson's starting to get hit by it and has been. Uh, we'll see what happens out of this crisis. Um, hyperinflation. Let's see. So this one's really interesting. So up until about 2000, so leading up right before the 2008 financial crisis, uh, the bottom 90% of earners uh, uh, had more in assets than the top 1%. So as a result of the gold standard getting flipped, pretty much you know, what that creates is only the people that understand that how money works really get served. People that have their money in uh, assets like real estate and just owning a home isn't necessarily having assets in real estate because it's not earning you a passive income. So that means earning homes and renting to people. It just means earning extra properties and letting it sit and increase in value. Uh, but paying off a 30 year mortgage uh, that you're living in isn't necessarily uh, earning passive income for most people. I mean, a lot of people, you know, don't finish paying off their mortgages and they'll go buy another house and just increase their debt and they don't really make any money off of it. Even if the house uh, gains in value, the ones that are really reaping are, you know, the people in the banks who are making a killing off your interest rates. Um, people that are financing you these homes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this one's pretty obvious, you know, as your money uh, decreases in value, you get poorer and poorer, but the people that have all their money and things that appreciate in value, uh, like stocks, um, etc., the ones that own the majority of it get richer and richer. So ending the gold standard was terrible for the bottom 90% which if you're listening to this, you're probably falling into. And so it's just an argument for Bitcoin, you know, a form of money that has a fixed supply and is tied to scarcity, just like the dollar was when it was tied to the gold standard, Make, makes it really powerful, something that you cannot change. Um, well, there's one, a couple I really wanted to show you guys. This one's pretty wild. U.S. national debt was relatively low until 1971, and then it's just a blast off to the moon, and we're only going to see that grow. It's a little bit outdated. We're above $24 trillion right now, I believe. Uh, personal saving rates steadily decreasing and then in 2008 it went up we're probably going to see this go up again because people realize that things are really unstable so they're going to be saving more but the problem is if your money is not tied in something that has a yield or pays a dividend it is and increases in value you're just going to get poorer and poorer so when you put your money in the bank it loses value because the interest rates that the bank do offers you does not compete with inflation so Technically speaking, it makes sense to have a reserve fund um, of whatever you deem. If you lose your job, you can have money that you can uh, pay towards bills and expenses. Uh, but after that, you know, you need to have your money in stuff that's going to gain in value if you're going to increase your wealth uh, and it attain stability. And if you don't think that's important, you know, there's a chart that's coming up that's really horrifying, which is incarceration rate of inmates um, incarcerated under 
state and federal jurisdiction per 100,000 people. And it's just like a rocket going straight up. Um, so females have, you know, minimally increased. Men have increased dramatically. And there could be, you know, this is a huge debate. And, and race definitely plays a role in this. And if you want to get deeper into this topic, read the book, uh, the new Jim Crow is really, really interesting and horrifying when it talks about mass incarceration rates. Uh, but when you take populations that are least privileged and debase their money and make them poorer, and the only people that really are able to gain and increase their wealth are people that, and, and battle inflation, are people that have their money and assets that gain in value over time, uh, it makes a lot of sense you know, for increased inequality and to see, you know, these minority populations get decimated by the war on drugs um, and, and to be higher, more likely to be incarcerated. Uh, here's another one, you know, share of 25 to 29 year olds living with parents or grandparents. I mean, a lot of it's just tossed up to being uh you know, people being snowflakes and not having any spine, but in reality, young people getting out of school are getting put in really bad situations uh, where they're having to uh, pay these huge amounts of student debt, uh, having not realized, I mean, just the general narrative is you need to go to school, you need to go to school, you need to go to school, and then the only way that many people can afford to go to school is taking out these huge loans, not realizing how long it's going to take for them to pay it off, or how terrible the job market is, and how it's only getting worse at this point. You know, we're probably going to see this skyrocket after this, because people aren't able to pay their rent. Um, and we're going to see a lot of evictions happen, just like we did in 2008, as people cannot afford rent and mortgages, and we're only going to you know, as, as home prices go up, it's just going to get worse, and it's just a recipe for disaster. Uh, divorce prevalence, uh, 1950 to 2016, a, a lot of people toss it up to, uh, you know, lots of, you know, values, but the re part of the re huge reason why is just money. You know, you <laughs> it's just insane. Think we get taken off the gold standard 1971 skyrocket you can pinpoint it exactly to when this happened obesity so yeah Bitcoin really really important right now interesting book uh, I've yet to read it but it's been tossed around a lot Bitcoin and Black America, I'm planning on reading it. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, crypt, the crypt, whole movement of cryptocurrency is about creating a more fair society for people. Because government has proven to have failed in doing that. And why is that? When you get centralized authority, they're going to make decisions that benefit them the most at the expense of others. That's just what happens in humanity. So you can you can trash capitalism, you know, but anytime you give control to these uh, few elite, this is what happens. And when you have a currency that's completely decentralized, the rules are set in stone, the only way to change it is for everybody to agree on it, that's gonna create a more fair system for people. And the funny thing about Bitcoin is it, it really benefits not just the poor people, but the rich people. And that's how the gold standard worked too. Uh, they, you know, the, the elite maybe weren't able to manipulate and amass uh, so much wealth under the gold standard as they are today and as easily they are as they are today. Uh, but their money was stable. You know, they could hold money and know that it was safe and that it had value. Uh, these are really scary times, but also exciting times. And I think it's important for everyone to have some exposure to Bitcoin. If you know nothing about it and want to learn more, feel free to reach out to me via email. And I'd love to talk. Um, 
love to Zoom, get you started, uh, you know, offer you resources. Visit my website, TucsonBlockchain.com, uh, and I'll point you to some good resources to get started. Uh, but yeah, if you have questions, uh, shoot, at, shoot me an email, and if you want to hear more, uh, go and watch some of my other videos. I do some tutorials on how to get started, how to buy cryptocurrency, uh, how to earn interest on it, uh, how to be rewarded for surfing the web, uh, you know, how to earn cryptocurrency. So yeah, check it out. Thanks for stopping by.